Hi guys, if it's Friday, it's Dan and Dirty Woodscraft, and I'm sorry this one's late. We've had just thunderstorm after thunderstorm running in off the gulf down here today, and I had I'd planned to come out at 7 this morning and shoot it, and here it is about 3, and this is the first time I'm able to get out of the house where it's not just raining so hard you can't see across the road. So, weather comes in, you know. Okay, today what we're going to talk about is security, and how you can find out if you're got a hunting camp, if you've got a hunting blind, if you've got a camp that's kind of stealthy or something like that. And I'm wanting to know if anybody else has been here since I've been gone. There's little tips or tricks you can do for that. Now, this is no poacher's trick, I'll just tell you straight up. But let's start with one of the simple components of it. What you want is you're going to want some cheap and I mean cheap go down to the dollar store go down to the craft store whatever and start looking for some cheap gray thread and I mean a hundred percent cotton cheap just a minute and I'll dig it out of here and there it is now that is just some super cheap greenish gray cotton thread and I want hundred percent cotton why? Because it goes pop. It only takes three or four pounds of pressure to pop it. It looks natural. Now, here's how we're going to incorporate this. Let's say that I'm the only one that owns this property, and I've got this dirt road coming in, and I've got a, a hunting place back there. And I'm going to be gone for about a week or so, and I want to come back and find out. Uh, one, has anybody been here? Well, you notice those nice, clean dirt ruts right there? When I'm pulling out and I'm leaving, I'm going to take me a brush or something, or just bring a broom with me, and I'm going to eliminate any track on that for, say, 10 feet. So when I get back up here, my first stop is right here. I'm going to get out and I'm going to look and see if there are any tire tracks where I had been. If it's rained and obliterated them, eh, that's where it goes the second. But usually, there's indication of fresh tire track. And that'll last for several days. So I can see somebody's come in and out of my land or been near my hunting camp. Now, where this thread comes in, is let's say I go from here and I go down this way and I've got a place down there. Well, off the trail, back down in here, but on the trail to it, at a certain point, I'm going to run a piece of that thread from tree to tree at about just above knee level. I want it about thigh level. Pull or tight, you'll never see it. It's kind of like a trip wire, but when you hit it, it'll just go pop, and you won't even notice what it was. Most people will walk right through it and never even recognize something bumped them. It's a uh, you know, little bitty briar or whatever. They won't even pay attention. But when I come back, I'll know somebody went down there because that thread's broke, ain't it? Well, blacky deer and stuff, absolutely, deer can do it. And this was an old trick we used to do on deer trails to find out if the deer were using this trail during the night or during the day. So we would come right at sundown and we'd put these on several trails and we'd come back the next morning and see what was broken. So we've only been gone from sundown to sun up, and we could tell the ones that they went in and out of during the night. That would be a big, bigger indicator of a place to start looking to hunt. Now, what this little gadget is, this was some thread I got part of a little super cheap sewing kit for like a buck at the dollar store. And it had like three or four little spools of thread like that. But let's say I get a bigger spool of thread, okay? That's where this little idea comes. You go to the sewing section where at Walmart or wherever where they sell sewing machines and tell them you want a thread bobbin. This is a bobbin. Okay, this is what goes in the bottom of the machine and you put thread on to add to the thread you see up on top of the machine. It's the bottom half of the equation. Okay, but you take this and a bolt that it will go on to and you put you a nut onto it. Now I can see there's all them holes in that thing. I take and run in the side and I tie and now I take my thumb and I do like that and I'll run, pull me off a piece of thread and I'll do like that and I'll wind it and I'll fill this bobbin up if you ain't already got a sewing machine the ability to do it 
and then I'll run it through the inside, through one of the holes, come out here that side and tie it. That way it won't unravel in my pack. There's a lot of thread right there for marking trails and marking things like that. So if I put it at about chest level on me, say 48 inches off the ground, the average deer is going to walk under that. It used to be an indicator to us to a buck because we'd put it about 43, 44 inches. The whitetails down here in my part of the south, the does would walk right under that. But the rack on a buck would hang it. And so it would be a better indicator that the bucks were going this way and the does are going that way. Another little trick for just some little sewing thread. But I'm wanting to tell if anybody's been in and out of here. By doing that, that gives me a little marker. Okay? Now how can I upstep this one more and use it like for security for me? Well, most everybody knows about a yo-yo fishing reel, right? Okay. Most of them, there's two styles of them, but they have, they're basically the same design. One has got this metal bar right here, and the other one, and I have one to show you, the other one's got a little wire bail there instead of that metal bar. They both work identical. Okay. So what I've done is, yo-yo reels have a hole punch for you to put a line to tie this up to use as a fishing reel. Now I'm sure, let it focus, I'm sure all of y'all know what this is. You pull the line out and then you set the little catch on it like, whoop, get my strings out of the way, like that. And then you're going to tie this to a springy limb or something. And now the game is when the fish, the fish pulls on the line, it takes up tension and it'll set the hook and sit there and hold them and the springy limb will keep them from doing it. Commonly using a lot of survival kits and stuff like that, but there's other uses for this. Now let's say I want to make some security for where I'm at in my little camp. See? So let's say I got a trail out here in front of me. I got plenty of thread. I take this and I only pull it out, say about that much, and then I'm going to go to the catch, set the catch, just like that. Now I want to tie this reel so it's not going to move, so I'm going to put it on the tree right over here beside my head, or maybe I'm going to put a stick in the ground right outside of my hammock, and I'm going to mount this on it through that loop right there in that snap I'm gonna run this gray thread and I'm gonna walk that way 50 yards whatever to where the trail crosses I'm gonna go across the trail I'm gonna tie it and I'm gonna walk back down my line come around this way and go up that way so that I formed a V see with this swivel right here in the middle both of these ends are tied off to trees on those trails but I've got two big V's going out in the primary approach to me, okay? Now, when this line gets broke, what I'm going to hear is, that's it. I can make it just two or even less. So when that gets broke, I hear, that's it. That'll wake me up. That's right here at me. And that little... It's going to, I'm, on, I'm listening for it. Even though I'm asleep, I'm going to be listening for it. And I know that something just broke my two approaches. And that will clue me in that there's something coming. Give me a little warning. Especially if I'm doing a stealth camp or something like that. That will give me a little warning that there's something, people or whatever, coming. Now if I want to use it on the other side, the aggressive side. I'm going to take, and on that loop I'm gonna put an empty coke can or something and I'm gonna put one single rock in it I ain't got one handy right here on this sandy road but I'm just gonna drop one rock so it rattles okay now I'm gonna pull this I am on this side of the trail on that side of the trail I'm gonna go and secure it and I'm gonna pull this line in as clear a path as I can just as far as it'll reach out. Okay? 
and then when it's fully tensioned I'm going to set the little latch okay and this will be tied to this tree over here I'm going to walk back to this end and I'm going to attach my fishing line to this end my sewing thread excuse me and I'm going to pull it tight and straight without triggering this all the way across this trail right here and I'm going to set it up now I'm over there see but now and I'll stretch this out to show you it's over that way in the woods so when whatever comes down here triggers this it's going to take off that way making a noise Rattle, 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 and going that way. Anything that's here, a person or whatever, is going to go, and look at that, and turn their back to me. So when I become aware of it, and I look up in the trail, it's facing away from me. I'm not attracting it to me. If it's looking for something, it'll go off after this, and it goes crashing across the trail that way, thinking it's chasing something. Gives me time. On the other hand, it sends it on a goose chase the other way. Because when it finds this, well, it's going to start looking over there thinking, I've got this right next to me, ain't it? And I'm over there. So it can be used as an alarm system going away from you. It can be used as an alarm system coming toward me. It can be simply used for fishing. It can simply be used as a way to trigger or alert me. Okay? It can also be used as a noise maker to spook something into something else like in survival situations, spike traps. I am in no way condoning this, okay? This is a piece of a tidbit of history for a survival situation, not for sport hunting, not for poaching. Understand? You would have a deer trail, and you'd come to a narrow point, and you would form a circle of long, thin spears sticking into that deer trail and then you would camouflage it a little bit okay then you would put other things to funnel the deer to that point so he's walking down the trail like he always does and there's a new limb over here no big deal and he walks and just as he gets right in front of all these spikes facing him at what would be about eye level to him when he would normally just turn and go around it but you've added some cover that's kind of funneled him to right there just as he gets there, he trips that wire, and right here up under his butt, boom, something makes a big racket. Deer lunge forward to escape predators. It's instinct. He jumps in, and he leaps right into all those spears. It was called a spear trap, and it was used in the late 1800s. It is illegal today, and it's not something I condone. But it was something that in a survival situation, something that makes a sound right up under their butt, makes them lunge and take off running forward by instinct right into a killing trap, a snare, a something that they would not. Otherwise, they'd probably get up there and look at this like, what is this? And they'd go around it. But they've got a clear opening in front of them and something spooked them. They will lunge straight into it. So a yo-yo fishing reel. It's something you might want to throw in your bug out bags. One, as a fisherman, it will provide you with some food while you're back at camp or doing something else. Bait it, set it, go do his stuff and come back and check it every hour or so. Check the game laws before you do this. Blackie is not encouraging you to in any way break or laws or bend rules. Check your game laws if these are legal in your state to use it in any way, shape, or form. But as a security measure, as a way to trip and make noise, as a way to show you somebody's been in here, these are so valuable and handy. And they're small, they light, and they don't weigh hardly nothing. And they got a lot of uses. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And again, sorry it's late, but I can hear rain coming right over yonder right now. So i got to get back and get this edited and get it posted. Please leave that like, share, and subscribe before you go. I'd really appreciate it to feed the algorithm. And drop a comment if you've ever thought about a time when you could use something like this. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.